Hi, I'm Chris, one of the diabetic educators. And I'm Sherry, one of the registered dietitians here at UP Health System Marquette. And today we want to talk about diabetes and sick day management. Um, when we look at diabetes and sick day management, there are a few things that we want to consider. One of them is to maintain a healthy diet, and that's what I'm going to be talking about here in a second. Another one is to talk about um, exercise and activity, and another one is to look at just what good diabetes management is. So let's talk a little bit about healthy eating. What does healthy eating look like? The reason for a healthy diet is when we look at the nutrients that are found in foods, those nutrients give us powerful ammunition to help our immune system stay as healthy as it possibly can stay. So what does a healthy diet mean? A healthy diet is one that consists of lots of vegetables and fruits. Vegetables and fruits contain a lot of what we call phytonutrients or phytochemicals, and, and that's what gives us the, um, that extra ammunition to keep our immune system as healthy as possible. The recommended amounts of vegetables and fruits, according to Dr. Andrew Weil, is um, to eat about five to seven servings of vegetables a day and two to three servings of fruits a day. So if you're not much of a fruit or vegetable eater, don't fret, a little bit is better than nothing. So whatever you can do to meet that goal is um, going to help give you some powerful tools to keep your body healthy. Um, another part of a balanced diet is to um, consider eating whole grains like quinoa, bulgur, barley, or whole grain breads and cereals, or whole grain pasta or brown rice. Another part of a healthy diet is to eat lean proteins like poultry and beef and uh, pork, fish, eggs, low-fat cheese, cottage cheese, um, also including some healthy anti-inflammatory oils like olive oil or even nuts and seeds. Um, and then the, the last part of this is to include plenty of fluids, especially water. Fluids are especially important just to keep our bodies well hydrated, especially if you develop a fever or um, if you develop any vomiting or diarrhea. Um, another aspect of a healthy diet is to space your meals out as evenly as possible throughout the day. Uh, balance out your carbohydrates like your diabetes educator has uh, previously advised you to do. And then remember that eating non-nutritious foods, also known as junk foods, as good as they might taste, they are not giving your body the powerful tools that it needs to keep your immune system healthy. If you develop illness, um, remember that plenty of fluids guideline. And then um, you might want, also might wanna consider keeping Pedialyte or some type of um, electrolyte replacement drink, a sports drink in your pantry. If you're not able to drink, eating popsicles, sugar-free popsicles, um, drinking broth or soups, eating soups, might also give you, uh, or will give you the fluids that you need to keep your hydration up to, up to par. And then as best you can, continue to follow that healthy nutrition regimen. Chris? Another part is staying active. Um, stay constant with constant daily activity. Get up and move. Try not to be sedentary. Aim for 30 minutes daily, three to five times a week. And if you have a really busy schedule, you can break up that 30 minutes throughout the day. It doesn't need to be consistent. You don't need to join a gym to be active. You can be creative. Things like vacuuming your house, that's activity. House cleaning, yard work, uh, chair exercise, climbing up the stairs, all of those things are ways to stay active. Good diabetes management also includes monitoring your blood sugars regularly or use the CGM. Don't stop doing this. Take your medications, oral and pills consistently and insulin as prescribed. Don't stop doing this. And of course, follow the healthy diet that Sherry had mentioned. Basic illness preventative measurements. Some of those are washing your hands frequently, one, maintain social distancing six to eight feet apart, avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth, practice respiratory hygiene. Respiratory hygiene includes covering your mouth with a bent elbow when you sneeze or cough. If you have a fever, coughing, difficulty breathing, call your doctor, let them know that you're coming in or let them know that the symptoms you might be having so they can be prepared for you. Stay at home if you're not feeling well. And stay informed and follow any advice from your health care provider. So if you're sick, what to do if you're sick with your diabetes? Monitor your blood sugar frequently. 
when you're under the weather, you might not be feeling well or you might not be eating or drinking and you may be taking medications to address those symptoms. Uh, for all those reasons, it is crucial to carefully monitor your blood sugar levels and utilize your CGM as much as possible. It might be necessary to take extra insulin to bring down those higher blood sugar levels. Be on the lookout for ketones. Uh, at very high levels, it, they could lead to diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. Um, that is a dangerous condition that demands immediately medical attention. If untreated, it could be fatal. What to do if you are sick? Also, monitor for your those ketones. Elevated ketone levels can occur when blood sugar readings are high. This can be a sign that the body is using fat and muscle for energy instead of sugar. Other signs of DKA include feeling tired, feeling weak, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, dehydration, and that fruity smell to the breath. If you have vomiting or moderate to large ketones, make sure you contact your healthcare provider immediately. It's important to maintain a normal schedule, especially with your medications. Beyond insulin, many of the over-counter medications also can affect your blood sugar levels. There are some of those sugar-free cough syrups on the market. Some of those actually do contain sugar and that can acerbate the already high blood sugars you might be experiencing. Pills taken orally instead that have the same ingredients as those cough syrups can be a better choice if they don't contain carbohydrates. Other drugs like decongestions also can raise the blood sugars, so keep track of those blood sugars. Be aware of the effects of pain and fever reducers as well. Aspirin in large doses can have that lower blood sugar effect. As Tylenol can cause a false or no reading on your continuous glucose monitors, and it can be toxic to liver and kidneys. So anyone with kidney complications or liver complications should be very conscious about how much Tylenol they're using. Ibuprofen and Motrin can also cause those lower blood sugar effects if you take too much. So be careful, monitor those blood sugars. Of course, there's those other general sick day guidelines, and those include Sherry? Yeah, um, other sick day guidelines um, I had mentioned a little bit ago about maintaining a good hydration status. Um, so one of the recommendations is to drink eight ounces of fluid per hour with every third hour, including a fluid that's high sodium. Uh, high sodium fluids could be broth or soups, um, especially if you're vomiting or having diarrhea or have a fever. The other recommendation is to try to aim for about 150 to 200 grams of carbohydrate a day in divided doses. Uh, make sure to give your insulin using your prescribed carbohydrate ratio. First. Make sure you take your blood sugar every two to four hours. And while your blood sugars are high, make sure you check your ketones. Call your primary care provider if you're vomiting more than once. If you have diarrhea five times or for longer than six hours in a day, if your blood sugar is greater than 300 or on two consecutive measurements and it's not responding to increased insulin and increased fluid intake, and call your doctor if ketones are also noted. Also want to give some simple medication and supply suggestions, especially with this time currently. Contact your DME supplier company early when, when you open that last box of supplies. I know a lot of insurance companies don't want you to fill early, but at least if you give your supplier a heads up, they know they can get that paperwork started. Contact your pharmacy with enough time to refill your prescriptions. Plan ahead. So for insulin, call your pharmacy when you open up that last vial. If you're taking oral medications, call your pharmacy when you have that half that bottle left. And then for testing supplies, when you open that last bottle of test strips, call your pharmacy to get that prescription refilled. Another point, ensure all your prescriptions are up to date and current with a maximum number of refills. Um, the last thing to remember is that we, were, we will all get through this. Take a deep breath and continue moving forward. Practice gratitude. And last but not least, remember that one contagious thing you want to spread is your smile. You never know when your smile will give someone else strength and encouragement needed for that moment. Stay healthy.